Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Contrary to what some people may believe, it can be difficult being a man these days. Now whoa, I hear you say, Paul, are you going to turn into an MRA? I've got a confession to make everyone, I've actually secretly been an MRA the entire time. I just needed to gain enough trust from all of you so that I could sneak into the uh, global feminist Antifa meeting rooms. And now that I've done that, I can go back to hating women for no reason. Now, those of you who've watched my previous videos, you might have an issue with this one. I, I hope you don't. I've gone through a good amount of effort to try and make sure that everything's contextualized and that I'm not purposely ignoring uh, certain aspects of the issues that I'm going to raise. And I want you to know that I'm speaking out of love and I'm going to make my arguments the exact same way I've done before, using the same guiding principles that I genuinely hold in my heart. So... Some of you probably saw this image going around online recently. The feedback to this was... pretty shocking, to say the least. I mean, people on the right used it as a radicalization tool, which is not surprising, they're... cunts. But it was the reaction of those on the left which kind of shocked me most. Calling them losers, saying that this means nothing and that nobody should give a shit. Kind of openly just saying, good, fuck those guys. <laughs> Never have actually said that out loud. It there might actually have been an instruction rather than a criticism, but anyway. A few months ago, I made a video about toxic masculinity. It was an attempt to reach out to people who are in the MRA or incel boards, chat rooms, group chats, all that kind of stuff, and try and explain that the best way to improve the day-to-day -day lives of men was through a feminist framework. By breaking down the ludicrous societal expectations placed on men by these social constructs. And I don't believe that to be true. I know that that is true. And look, looking at this survey, I understand that sex isn't everything, I, I know that. But what you can infer from this survey, well, at least what I did, is that there are not only a lot of men who don't have sex, obviously that's the point of the survey, but there are a lot of men who don't have a close emotional bond with another person. Which to me is possibly the most harmful thing that could happen to a person. So in this video I'm going to look at a few things. I'm going to look at some of the economic and societal reasons which might explain why this number is so high. And I'm also going to offer some advice to those who might not think that this is actually an issue, and to those who may be part of this 27% to let you know that things are going to be okay. So having said all that, let's get cracking. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? This enormous upswing began in 2008, which was, of course, the year the global financial crash began. Now, am I going to say that all of the issues surrounding this survey can be boiled down to simply blaming capitalism? No, of course I'm not. That would be silly. I am going to say that most of the issues can definitely be blamed on capitalism. Most of them. I'd say like 92% of them can. I would send you on the formula I used to work that out, but it's a trade secret. Uh, Antifa super soldier level 4 only. Sorry about that. So let's take a look at these in logical order then, before you get a job or buy a house or start saving for a, um, pension? I don't know what that is. Uh, you need to get an education, right? You need to finish high school and then go to college. In 2017, Ireland had the second highest cost for college attendance in the EU. Second only to the UK, who, <laughs> who have now left the EU, meaning that Ireland probably has the highest... Oh god, I wonder if that's true. Oh, I'm not going to look it up. It'll go beyond the timeline of the survey. Anyway, you're perhaps 18, 19 years old, fresh out of secondary school or high school, and you're in college, and you're already in an unbelievable amount of debt. But Paul, this is a US survey. Why are you talking about Ireland and the UK being expensive when it's for the US? I don't think I really need to explain how expensive college is in the United States, do I? I, I think the point will still stand. Anyway, this is all, of course, assuming you can even afford to go to college in the first place. I mean, if you can't, well, you're already on the back foot, young man. You better get out there and work. Earn your keep. Besides, you're a grown-up now. You need to live on your own to gain some independence. Not buy a house, you're too young for that. Just rent somewhere, learn the ropes. How much can it possibly cost? Oh, sorry, no, hang on, wait, hang on. Before we move on to living somewhere... You, you need a job first, but you're either in college at the moment, meaning you can't work full-time, or you can't afford to go to college, so you'll probably have to work in what 
arseholes call a low-skilled job, or the service sector, basically. Restaurants, pubs, shops, yada yada yada. Those kind of places. Now a few months working there and you'll be able to pay off your crippling college debt, right? No. Whether you work in Ireland, the UK or the US, you will be in the lowest paid age bracket, working in the lowest paid industry. What do you know, there's more pressure on young people. Who is the time for writing when you're working on social hours? Well, it's probably a good thing that the rental costs are so low, right? You can afford to live in your own place with your low wages. It's easier to have sex when you have your own private space to do so. Also, also, uh, no, also no. Rents are at their highest point in years in most places. Dublin, New York and London being some of the most expensive cities in the world to rent in. The high cost of rental accommodation, particularly private rental accommodation, means that more and more people under the age of 30 are living with their parents later into life. Again, easier to have sex when you have your own private space to do so. Well, maybe you don't need to rent them. Maybe you can just save up to buy a house. You only need to deposit for a mortgage. How much can that possibly be? When I was young, you'd get a mortgage for four beans, and they didn't even have to be baked beans. Well, that's more expensive too. All this, alongside the general lower levels of job satisfaction among younger people, means that those under 30 are living with their parents, working in jobs that they hate, for wages so low they can't live on their own. Now, I'm not going to get into critiques of the landlord class, that's for a future video, but this isn't even taking into account that those who do live in their own accommodation are very often just a couple of missed paychecks from homelessness. Throw in the neoliberal and conservative denial of the very real and pending climate doom means that there's barely a present for these people there may well be very little future too. All this pressure has led to the increase in the rates of depression and suicidality in young people, as you can see on screen. So it's not really any surprise that 49% of people surveyed by the BBC in 2018 said that stress was the main cause of their sexual issues. Now I fully understand that these are not male issues. I absolutely understand that of all the groups who might be affected by these issues, straight white men are probably going to feel the brunt of all this the lightest, and I need to make it perfectly clear that most groups of people are going to have this pressure as their baseline, and then have sexual, racial, or gender-based discrimination piled on top of it. I guess I'm just coming at this from the point of view of I just don't want people to suffer, and I believe capitalism causes more people to suffer than not. The only way to resolve these issues for a lot of people would be the dismantling of many of these capitalist structures. Power is maintained, to a large extent, through the division of those who could stand together in opposition. This is why all those groups, conservatives, TERFs, fascists, MRAs, neo-Nazis, incels, they're all built on a framework of social exclusion. They're very often not sold to people to promote what you are, but what others are not. And this othering, which the left sometimes does, better silos people who feel vulnerable, so that they can be snapped up and radicalised by the groups I've mentioned before, by giving them a sense of belonging. They may not believe anything that's being preached at them, but they're there, and they're allowed to take part. I think that's the reason why there are far more former fascists who are now leftists than the other way around. And again, I want to be perfectly clear, I'm not saying that we should be friends with bigots. That's the end of that point, by the way. No ifs, ands, or buts. We shouldn't be. I'm just trying to point out that these groups claim that they are representative of certain sections of people. And quite often, that is not the case. Because these groups are fucking liars. Now, if you're watching this and you're a part of the 27%, I realise that everything I've just gone through makes it seem like there's no hope for you. But that's not true. What I've done is outlined the different ways in which what you might be going through may not be your fault. Now, it may well be your fault. You could be an asshole and belong to one of those groups that I mentioned earlier. People don't like assholes, you know? But if you're not one of those people, the most important thing to realise is that all that I've gone through, the economic hurdles, the societal hurdles, they can be overcome by you respecting others, by enjoying being around others. Most importantly, though, by you not setting unrealistic expectations on what you think you deserve 
due to your connections with others. You're not entitled to sex because you've been chivalrous. You're not entitled to sex because you have women who are friends. Women don't owe you anything. Maybe, uh, I guess, a trust and a friendship which you deserve based on the sincerity of your actions. And this friendship isn't the failure, it's, it's the goal. And that's the most important thing to realise. Everyone has an innate fear of failure. I get that. And you probably look at things and think, I've tried before and I didn't have sex, therefore I failed. But that's not right. You have to understand that you're interacting with other human beings. If you had a friend who never wanted to hang out with you except uh, when they wanted to come over and play your Xbox, you probably wouldn't want to hang out with them very much. If all you're interested in is sex, then people probably won't want to be around you. If you're a cis head guy, treat women the same way you'd want to be treated by a gay friend of yours. They're attracted to men, but they want to be around you for you because you're their friend. There's no other reason. They just enjoy your company. If they only ever spoke about how much they wanted to fuck you, you wouldn't want to be friends with them because that's weird and harassment. And this might sound like silly advice given the pandemic, but really what you need to do is just go out and meet people. They're not going to hate you, they're not going to think that you're beneath them. Just talk and be nice to people, to everyone. And if you join some club and there's someone who thinks you're beneath them, I guarantee that most of the other people in the club will support you because caring is what counts. These people are there for friendship, for camaraderie, for a shared enjoyment of Warhammer or whatever it is that you do. Every good relationship is built on a platform of mutual respect, and mutual is the key word here. To those on the left who are watching, I hope I've made my points clearly enough, uh, just kind of to be careful about the words you use. And I'm not saying you need to censor yourself or uh, not say certain things to like placate the male masses. If you want to insult people, go for it. I can't stop you. And I understand that the men bad meme is admittedly quite funny most of the time, but this, just, this was just such a weird vilification of surveyed strangers. Those who answered this survey are just people. People who are probably feeling vulnerable. Since the most important traits regarding masculinity, which are foisted upon men by society, are being breadwinners and not being virgins. So a vulnerable person who scrolls through the comments looking for support, well, I mean, wh where do you think they're going to turn? Someone who laughs at them and says that they're shit or someone who claims that they're worried about this? And that they have a community of like-minded people who love to chat with you. Yeah, I'm sure we're all aware of how difficult it is to do a U-turn in a narrow space. And the right-wing pipeline is very narrow indeed. To those on the right, incels, MRA, uh, I'll be completely honest with you and say that what I think you do is damaging to society and drives people away from meaningful relationships. I hope this video has shown you that there are actual underlying issues which need to be addressed with capitalism and that things shouldn't be boiled down to the incorrect statement of it's feminism's fault. Now, I don't read the comments section, so if I have swayed you even a little bit, drop me a message on Twitter. At least if you're an arsehole, I can block you straight away. Now, if you think that nothing I've said is true and that I'm talking out of my arse, then I don't really know what to say. If facts won't sway you, and if stats won't sway you, and if sincerity won't sway you, then I don't think anything else will, because you're clearly not interested in the truth. All I can do is just hope that you won't have an impact on anyone else's life, because if your goal is to make others unhappy, then I can't do much apart from wish you nothing but isolation and misery for the rest of the life that you've, quite frankly, wasted. To everyone else, look after yourselves, I love you, and thanks for watching.